You have asked, so I'm going to answer. BDC, men of angle, or mill. Let's do it. I appreciate you guys coming to the channel. Make sure to like and subscribe. There are training courses. I am actually, as you're watching this, teaching my last class of 2023, but the 2024 schedule is up and I will be adding more here shortly. So make sure you take a look. If you guys have range connections and think we can get a class going together out there, go ahead and drop them in the comments or shoot uh, an email to sales at weapon-snatcher.com and we'll get that squared away because I would love to uh, continue teaching and traveling as uh, the opportunity arises. Also, make sure to check out the website for products such as B5 stocks and trigger cams. They're up and bang bags are getting restocked. Check it around Black Friday, Cyber Monday. So I'm looking forward to that finally, right? So I can finally get all those people who have been asking. They're going to be there. So make sure you check all that out and let's get into this. So starting off with this conversation, there is a lot to unpack, so I'm gonna to try to do it as quickly and thoroughly as possible. Keep in mind, I do have a preference. I prefer mill, and I'm gonna give you the reasons why. The, well, just to start off, we're gonna start off with BDC. If you don't know what BDC is, BDC is bullet drop compensating reticle. It refers to the, opti the reticle in an optic that is calibrated for the exact round i.e. grain weight and exact velocity that it's going to be flying so that all you need to do is zero it at the said distance most often times it's 100 but it could be something else and then your rounds uh, ballistic flight is going to drop in line with the stadia lines already built into the reticle it's going to be ballistically calibrated for it now <clears throat> that offers more cons than pros so to get into this real quick, we'll, we'll do this in a step way. We'll start with bullet drop compensating reticles and we'll go all into it. The advantage of a bullet drop compensating reticle comes from if you're working inside a team or a military unit where the logistics are known. You have, you're all shooting the same guns, you're shooting the same ammo, and logistically that's not gonna change. You don't have that problem, so it's gonna be known. So no matter what, if I have I'll just use an example of when I was in the Marine Corps. M16A4s had ACOGs, M4, and, and the M4s had ACOGs, but they were both ballistically 
different as far as the reticle because of the different barrel lengths. So you're going to have a different velocity, but the ammo was the same. So you could change ammo between each platform, but because the reticle was different for each one, it looked the same, but it was uh, calibrated differently for each one. It's going to be a little different. So you can swap ammo and regardless, you'll be okay. But that's because you're dealing with known logistical factors like the ammo. <clears throat> and in law enforcement units, that can apply as well. For the average civilian shooter, that doesn't work unless you are specifically buying the same thing all the time. You're not changing anything. Then it works. But you're catering your entire uh, logistical platform to work for that one thing, which can be a big pain in the ass. Another problem with uh, bullet drop compensating reticles is communication. This is a big problem. I talked with several other instructors who have decades more experience than I do because I wanted to make sure that my experience wasn't the only one I was giving you. But across the board, it's turning out to be pretty much the same. When you're communicating wind, when you're communicating uh, sh shot placement and corrections with a bullet drop compensating reticle, it can be very difficult because there isn't a set a uh, set graph to go off, if you will. There isn't a set language, unless, again, you're working in a unit or a team and you're all shooting the same thing. Then there is. The only communication that actually becomes the same if you don't have that set team or unit is now you're communicating based off of the target size. Hold half a target left. Hold two and a half targets high, one target right, stuff like that. You're correcting off the target, which in and of itself can be very accurate however it is not very precise and it lends to some error because you do not know for sure if the communication that you're giving to the shooter is being relayed properly and they're actually doing a good hold based off of what you're saying so that can be a big pain in the ass i've seen this plenty of times as an instructor so you have to make sure that you and your shooters are on the same level of communication you need to get the same verbiage down. Hey, this is the these are the words and the language that we're working off of. <clears throat> Another issue with bullet drop compensating reticles is wind. Now, most of them have windage dots put into them, but they're all going to be different. For example, this one is a whether you, if you're shooting a 556, five, it has wind dots for what is it? Um, seven mile an hour winds, and that's it. And seven mile an hour, that's that's actually quite a lot and nothing in between there. Then then the same dots for 308 are for 10 mile an hour winds. So depending on what you're shooting, it's going to change. <clears throat> and again, the language becomes fuddled. Now, another thing that's a pain in the ass is it, it with it is if you're going to take range finders with a uh, ballistic software or ballistic calculators or ballistic software, or even off of your phone, you cannot communicate to your bullet drop compensating shooter effectively because calculators are using minute of angle or mil. And that's because they are a fixed number. They are a fixed uh, way to measure what you're doing. They're a fixed measurement. Bullet drop compensating reticles aren't. If you change one thing, in the formula that makes the BDC accurate, it is no longer accurate. And that can be a pain in the ass. When I would teach ACOGs, or the Marine Corps calls them RCOs, Reflex Combat Optics, in the Marine Corps, we would teach them, hey, this is what your reticle does, these are all the different things, but what you're actually going to do is you're gonna draw your reticle as perfect as you can, and we're gonna shoot at 100, 200, 300, 400, and 500 and you're going to then put a dot exactly where you have to hold in your reticle on that drawing so now you have your dope and that's how you did it you did it just by a picture like that there was no 2.1 mils or three and a half minutes or anything like that it was just put a dot because there is no set way to calculate it because bdc it's not going to be precise and if you get one that's precise Good on you, hold on to it. It's gonna be accurate. Because for example, if this is, this is a BDC optic and it has minute turrets, but it's on a 10 and a half inch barrel. Now, if I know, 
because I have the manual, what the velocity needs to be for the 5.56 to line up with the BDC in this. But I also already know that this 10.5, the velocity doesn't line up for that. So all the BDC is just gonna be a suggestion. I can use the reticle to range because that's what it's built for, but then I'm still gonna have to do a drawing to show and plot a dot exactly where I'm gonna have to hit. Or I can just dial everything in minute, which is not what this optic is meant to do. And that doesn't mean anything is wrong with this optic, it's just not what it was designed to do. Which means I cannot plug and play with this optic into um, other firearms or barrel lengths or different ammo types or different platforms as easily as I could minute of angle or mill. So that becomes a pain. <clears throat> and the fact that you have to have those specific velocities if you're trying to find that even if you get close you're still going to be off because every gun's going to be a little different regardless if they're the same exact thing now another experience i've had and other shooters and instructors have had that i've spoken with is students that come out to classes with a bullet drop compensating reticle often find themselves held back from learning because they're not learning what your ballistic calculators can do. They're not learning uh, how to actually discern what's going on downrange. They're not learning how to dissect and diagnose what they're doing right and wrong and also what their round is doing in flight because they don't have that fixed measurement of a minute or mil reticle in front of them to put that pattern together, that pattern of the flight together in their mind. To put it poorly, the best thing for bullet drop compensated reticles is it's combat shooting. It's essentially high volumes of fire with a team or a unit to suppress and take down the enemy. Um, that's pretty close to the uh, Marine Corps infantryman's uh, mission. But as a civilian shooter, who may have many different types of equipment and optics and ammo and switching back and forth and all these different things, you're gonna find yourself held back, especially if you're starting off on your journey on learning in depth. Another note I wanna make is I've had people say, hey, you know, BDC is better because they have auto ranging reticles. So do, <laughs> so do minute and mill reticles. I have multiple mill reticles that have auto ranging reticles in them, which basically works off the average height and width of a human around the world, which is me, 5, 8, 19 inches across, you range me, I'm probably dead. Okay, so uh, this one is a BDC and it has an auto ranging reticle in there as well. But again, I need to know, all right, so that auto ranging puts them at 400 yards. Is my 400 yard dope on the BDC actually true to the velocity of my round out of this gun. If it's not, I still have a hold that's off anyways. So if I'm gonna have to deal with things like that, why wouldn't I get a fixed unit of measurement like mil or minute, I recommend mil still, and take that velocity, plug it into stuff like this, and now I know absolutely everything about that firearm that I need to know and where to and how to engage. So it becomes a more, uh, readily accessible plug and play method that gives you more capability as a shooter as long as you rise to the understanding and the knowledge that's out there. So, okay, now that's enough for the BDC. Let's go into minute of angle. Just to give you the exact definition of minute of angle so I don't give you a messed up one. Minute of angle is an imperial angular measurement system, okay? One minute of angle is roughly one 0.047 inches at 100 yards. Now, what does that mean? That means, generally speaking, every 100 yards is go one minute of angle is going to be one inch. So 100 yards, one inch, 200 yards, two inches, 1,000 yards, 10 inches, so on and so forth. In communication between shooters or talking about firearms and the accuracy, minute of angle is often used as a measurement of accuracy of the firearm. I have a quarter minute gun. That means I'm shooting a quarter of an inch at 100 yards. So at 200 yards, that's a half inch group. At 400 yards, so on and so forth, okay? And to be honest, that's what I use minute of angle for. It is a measurement of the accuracy of my firearm. And what you will find, or what I have found and others have found is, more hunters are still using minute of angle than precision shooters or long range people because that is the 
that is what was more common at the time when that was coming out. And so there's a lot of remnants of that. The majority of people who understand minute of angle, like mathematically, they find it simple because we as Americans grow up using inches. We don't use uh, metric. Now, I am not a mathematician. I suck at math. I always have. So when it comes to shooting or anything in life, really, I simplify things as much as possible when it comes to numbers, and that's how I do it. But with the advent of Kestrels and ballistic calculators, all we need do is change the setting to minute of angle, get the range, set the range, look at it, and then we have it on our calculator right in front of us, and we just plug that into our scope. There's no need to do anything crazy. And the only time I find myself using math when it comes to shooting now is if I have to dial at X amount, let's say 15 minutes or 15 mils, that's what I'm usually doing, and that's all I can dial. But I have to hold 25 mils. So I'm just gonna add, I'm gonna dial 15, hold 10 in my reticle, and that's pretty much the extent of the math that I need to do, typically speaking. There's a couple other things, but. So when it comes to minutes, You'll find it a lot with uh, an older generational knowledge of shooters, which is absolutely fine. I still get a lot of shooters with minute, so I teach them on minute. That is a, uh, an area in which I need to get better in because my flight path that I can see of rounds in my head is done in mils because it's simpler and it makes more sense to me. So I got myself a minute scope and I'm going to be using it too so I can better myself that way. Now. Communication is a big factor. If I am spotting in mills and you're shooting in minutes or vice versa, now we have to communicate based off of the target that we're seeing, just like with the BDC. Unless I'm one of those smart guys, and I know a few that can mill it on my reticle. All right, uh, he missed 0.2 or 0.3, whatever, and then do the formula in my head, this many minutes hold. I'm not one of those guys and, well, the education in America isn't so great, so I'm just going to say I don't run into many people who can still do that. And that also was something that came out of uh, when the U.S. Army, U.S. Marine Corps incorporated optics that were mill dot reticles with minute turrets, which honestly I still get some of those too, and there's a different way I teach how to do that, um, but neither one of them require math. <clears throat> So again, minute, it is an effective measurement to engage at distance. However, it is not as effective because you're dealing with it in fractions, whereas mil, you're dealing with tenths. So there's also some formulas, some um, quick wind and uh, quick ranging, I guess, drills you could or drills, uh, formulas you do with mill that you cannot do with minute or BDC. So to get into mills, mill radian is a metric angular measurement system. One mill equals 3.6 inches at 100 yards. Okay, now to work off the same language, one mill is, that's the solid, that's the whole form of the number. But we make corrections and we zero and we do these things and one tenth, so 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.3, all the way to 0 0.9, and then one mil, and then it goes 1.1, 1 1.2, 1 1.3, 1 1.5, so on and so forth. I explain this not because I assume people are dumb, but because I get people who don't understand these things, so I wanna make sure that they do, so we speak on the same language. When you're going into mills, you are, like I said, you're dealing with one tenth. Some optics, they have a 0.2, so, 0 0.2, 0 0.4, 0 0.6, so on and so forth, which drives me nuts. Um, I prefer uh, one-tenth iterations on the stadia lines and in my elevation and windage. Now, one thing that mill does, or one of the things that mill has an advantage over the others is you can do things like speed drop. If you don't know what speed drop is, it is essentially there's a minimum range and a maximum range for your gun specifically and your round and your optic combo and all that, where you can okay, this is my range, say it's 540 yards, say my speed drop number is 1.8 mils. I will take 1.8 and I will take 540 yards, 540 becomes 5.4 and I will have uh, 5.4 minus 1.8. What that gives me is my mils that I'm gonna to hold to engage 540 yards. 
There's two other ways I do that, that because that to me takes too much time. So I try to simplify it. For some reason it works better in my head that, oh, if I just find the difference between 1.8 mils to 5.4 mils, that seems easier than subtracting. Or I just turn them into whole numbers. 54 minus 18, that gives me my whole number. And then I'm gonna turn that whole number into a mil hold and you know, engage. There's a couple different ways you can do it. Whatever works better for your mind on the draw. And uh, anyway, so we can also take these 0.1 subtensions in our stadia lines and know our wins. For example, my competition gun is a 20 inch barrel uh, 556, I'm shooting 69 grain SMK. It is a three mile an hour gun. What that means is every three mile an hour, three mile an hour, six mile an hour, nine mile an hour, I'm, my bullet's going to be drifting off at a set rate. So at 100 yards, zero. At 200 yards and a three mile an hour wind, it's going to be drifting 0.1. Now I don't have a 0.1 in minutes and I don't have a 0.1 in bullet drop compensating. At 300 yards, it's 0.2. At 400 yards, it becomes 0.4. So you see how these things line up? They don't have those in the other reticles. At 500 yards, 0.5, 6 point is 6, is 0.6, excuse me. And at seven, it becomes 0.8. <clears throat> so that gives me a fixed path of, okay, it's that hold here at that distance. That is easy to remember because the numbers just line up. That's quick wind. I mean, that's really all that is, is getting that down. Now, yes, there is easy ways to do these things within minutes. However, they're not as, uh, from my own experience, let me just speak about this on my own experience. For me, it is not as easy to remember or retain. But I'm gonna try to work on that. <clears throat> it's probably gonna take some time, I'm a little slow. Now, language becomes another big factor. Majority of long range shooters, whether they be hunters or precision guys that are just shooting to shoot far or shooting competition to shoot far, they're using mill radian. And it's because of that quick communication, the accessibility on different formulas that work in, um, in mill and that the others do not have. These are the different reasons and things that I have noticed from shooters uh, that I am teaching, from conversations I've had, from other ex instructors who have been doing this longer than I've been alive, as well as the different competitions and places that I've shot, whether it be in training or in the military and outside, it can become a pain in the ass. Uh, another thing that just came to mind is, so to give an example of Marine Corps riflemen, infantry riflemen trained to shoot in BDC, they get out of the Marine Corps and say they want to get into shooting. They virtually know nothing about it. If say they just spent, well, like I did four years infantry and got out, they virtually know nothing about shooting because the Marine Corps has taught them how to use their systems very effectively, I might add. However, it doesn't teach you how to understand firearms and shooting to a holistic level, which is what I hope to impart on you guys. So these are some of my thoughts in regards to BDC versus minute versus mill. I'm sure there's plenty more out there. I have had comments from people saying, oh, you know, it didn't hold me back here, 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 whatever. That's great. Do you? Um, we all come from different experiences, different backgrounds, and our capabilities are different. My job here that I have undertaken is to raise the level of American shooter out there and our understanding, but that also means my own as well. So if you have information that you think I might benefit for, drop them in the comments below, and I'm more than happy to take a read at that and shoot a comment back.